Have you ever wondered how to make these cute faux book stacks without any power tools? Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how. I'm Amy Green with Amy and Art Designs, and I am so glad you're here, my friend. Let's go craft. Hey, y'all. Welcome back. I am so glad you're here. Today, we're going to start with a technology piece. A lot of you have asked me how to create things in Silhouette Studio and cut them, so that's what I'm going to show you. Now, before we get started, I, I want you to know that even if you don't have a Silhouette, let's say you use a Cricut or a Gloat Forge, you can still use Silhouette Studio to create your SVG and then pull it into your cutting software. And in my opinion, this is one of the easiest softwares to use to create a cut file. So let's get started. Uh, today, we're just gonna do really a basic tutorial we're going to just start with words so i'm going to choose my text button here this is my canvas layout here and i have this set on the let me pull this up this is my page setup and here are my settings 12 inches wide by 12 inches long i'm not going to use a cutting mat i'm going to put my vinyl right into the machine and this is just where you specify your uh, machine type the feed again I'm not using a cutting mat my width and you have some options down here this is my cut border so this red line here just shows me that's where my machine will cut This grid is set up to one inch. These, these are one inches to help me know how big to make my design. And then I have it. You can change the grid size, but I like this because it's divided into um, fourths, which works really well for what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with my text. All we're going to do is go over here. We're going to grab the this, which is our typing font right here. We're going to... Go over here and I'm going to type the name of my font, which is Tippy Tappy Type. That's the one I want. This is a super cute font. Well, it switched on me. Hold on. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to go back here and choose. There we go. So I want my words to be in, let's see, farm. Fresh trees is one that we're going to choose. Let's start with this one. I love this font because it's a typing, it looks like it's a typewriter font, but it also cuts really well. And because we're using our cutting machine to make the words, we want a font that cuts well. There are some cool type fonts that, but they're funky around the edges and they're not going to cut well. So that's one thing that we want to look for. So I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna just here. And I want my words to be shorter because the space I have on my book stack is about, uh, it's a little over a half inch. So I'm gonna use the guides. Okay, I'm just gonna blow up my screen so that you do that by going up here. And I'm gonna go plus so that it's larger and I have just over three quarters of an inch. So I'm just, I'm just putting my cursor here over the arrow and I'm dragging, All right? And I want this to fit in just over, so I'm not looking at this measurement here. This tells me that that I've got 0.98 or almost one inch tall, but that's the size of this box right here. All right. What I want to look at is how tall my font is. And my font is just over a half inch. And because the space that I have on my on my to put on my book stack is 
um, about three quarters. So the space that I have to put on my books on my book stack is three quarters. That's how tall the faux spine is going to be. And that's about the size I want my letter. And if I look up here, it's going to tell me my letters. If I look up here, it's going to tell me my font size. And I'm just going to round it down to 56 to make it simple. Why did it do that? It made it bigger. No, it didn't. I'm going to go down to 54. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I can look at my words and see that each one... I can, if I line, I can tell this is two inches, this is about two inches, and this is about two inches, and that's the perfect size for my book stack. All right, so let's do this again. We are going to go back here. We're going to choose the A for text. We are going to go ahead and start typing our word. We're going to highlight it. We're going to choose our text. And when you go here, let me just, when you go to the top menu, when you start typing by default, mine is set to Arial. You can change that, but I just leave it there. I can go down here and look at what I've recently used. And I can just select Tippy Tappy Type. And if you remember, our font size was 54. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to type Merry Little Christmas. And just to make sure, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to choose my arrow again. I'm going to drag my font down, and I'm just going to make sure that it fits in that three quarters. Because this word has, or this, font, this size, has the Y that hangs down. So it has tall letters and letters that hang below. And you need to think about that. And because I have exactly uh, three quarters of an inch to work with on my book, or I have under three quarters of an inch to, to work with, this is going to be too long and it's going to hang over. So I'm, so I have three quarters. I'm going to make this just a little shorter. I'm going to go down to 50, 52 and see what that looks like. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want 52. Now, there we go. Now, let's see what that looks like. Mm -hmm, that's still too big. Let's go down to 50. Mm -mm. I'm going to go to 46. There we go. That's going to do it. So I'm using this top line as my guide here. And then I want it to be shorter than this because this is three quarters of an inch. And I have just under three quarters of an inch to work with. So this should fit. And because this one is 46, I'm going to go ahead and make this one 46 so that they look the same because I want to use these together. All right. So the next thing we're going to do to make this easy to cut or to weed is we're going to draw a box around it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pick this rectangle and I'm going to draw a box so that when this cuts, it will also cut a box around it. I'm going to, oops. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete this. Go back. Hover. I want to choose my rectangle. And this bound, uh, this cutting box or bounding bo box will cut so that it makes it really simple to weed that when it's time. The next thing we're going to do is push send. And we're going to go ahead and cut our words. I've got my vinyl loaded in my machine. I'm here on the send screen, and this is what's going to send 
the design to my cutting machine. I right now have the auto blade in which we can talk about on another video. I like to use the blade depth of two with the vinyl. I just find that one doesn't always cut it clean enough. And you can go down here and push test if you're not sure if it's going to cut. I'm confident it will on two, so I'm not going to do that. I generally leave these settings alone. And this tells me it's ready and connected. I just go ahead and push send and my design will go ahead and cut. I've got a variety of things here to use to make our book stacks. I've, these came from Dollar Tree and they're the crates that have nothing on the end. Some of the crates, these mini crates, have a little hole right here and you don't want those. You want the ones that are flat on the ends. I've got some chalk paint. Um, these, I think I'm gonna do them, paint them white. I might paint one red, I haven't decided yet. And then I've got some jingle bells that we might use. We're gonna Mod Podge a napkin on to one, I think. You know, I changed my mind. I've got some ribbon. I've got a variety of ribbon. And I've got my vinyl, of course. And I've got some greenery, some faux greenery. This came from Walmart. Um, I am so impressed with their greenery this year. It's just really pretty. So, and I love the flocked greenery, so we might be using that. Again, I reserve the right to change my mind, but we are going to go ahead and get started with the first step, which is going to be... And everything that I end up using is going to go down in the description, including, including that awesome font I use. I'll, I'll just give you a link to that. I am obsessed with her fonts. Missy Meyer has the best fonts. So we're going to go ahead and paint these first. I'm using um, white home decor chalk paint. I love the coverage that this white paint gives. It's one of my favorites in terms of chalk paint and I'm just going to use a makeup wedge and we're just going to go ahead and paint this. Okay. So I'm going to paint these and I will be back. All right, so this one is painted white. This one I'm going to paint red and white. <clears throat> and to do that, I'm going to tape it off. So I'm just going to start here. And I'm going to tape all the way around my box. So that I only paint this part red. Okay, so this is ready now and I'm going to go ahead and paint this. I've taped it off so that it lines up with this right here. And I will finish painting this and I'll be back. So I'm going to speed this up for you because we're just going to repeat the process. We're going to do the same thing on the middle row and the bottom row. You can make the paint dry faster if you use a heat gun and dry that paint. So I painted these and I've actually sanded them down a little bit. You can see where they're distressed. Now I'm gonna take this home decor wax and I'm just gonna age them just slightly. The thing to know about the home decor wax, if you've never used it, is a little goes a really long way. Um, you just want to go use a really light touch with it. So I even dab it off of my sponge and just hit the edges lightly. Um, if you by chance get what you feel like is too much in a certain area, you can sand it off. But I just wanna show you the difference that this makes. You can age this as much or as little as you want. For these, I really like that aged look. I like the character it gives it, and it just makes it look a little old and farmhouse funky. Um, 
the one thing I want to tell you about the decor wax is that it's possible to get it on a little too heavy, but I don't want you to be upset. If you do, all you have to do is take a piece of sandpaper and sand off where it looks a little dark and it'll lighten that aging right up. It'll look fabulous. So have fun with this. The more you use the decor wax, the better you're going to get at it and you're going to get used to how it works and before long you're going to be an absolute pro at it. So I cut these out. Farm Fresh Trees is going to go on our white box and Merry Little Christmas is going to go on our, our red and white box. But I want the words Merry and Christmas in white and I want the word a little in black. So I wasn't I wasn't sure when I cut these out how I was going to paint the boxes. So I just cut everything. I'm going to speed this up for you now. I'm just weeding, which means removing the vinyl or the negative space that I'm not going to use on my final design. I'm using a couple tools here that I love. I'm going to link them down below in case you'd like to look at them. I highly suggest having the right tools. Having the right tools makes all the difference when you're doing a project like this. So if you don't have the right tools, go get them because it's, you, you just will, it's a night and day. It, it's a must. So when I'm done weeding this, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, this <laughs> is a big old roll of transfer tape. I got this um, on Amazon. I actually bought it by accident. I thought it was for my laser. And it's not, but I love this transfer tape so much because it is sticky enough, but not too sticky. I love that it's clear and it just works really well. So I'll put the link down below. I'm sure it's in my Amazon store. I'm going to speed this part up for you. I'm just applying each of the words to the transfer tape. And then I'm going to cut them out into individual pieces so that I have a little more control over where I apply each word to my faux book stack. So the next step is to make sure um, that this is a, a rubber uh, plastic razor. You can also use um, a, like a, they have vinyl tools. You can find them at Dollar Tree. This one works pretty well. Okay, so you want to make sure that it's stuck to your transfer tape. We're just going to line it up. So this part is so much fun for me because I can start to see the design come together. And what I want to tell you about this part is that it's really important to make sure that your letters or your vinyl design is adhered to the surface so that when you remove that transfer tape, only the transfer tape comes up and not the words. Look how cute these words look. I love this font. Again, the fonts down below, it's Tippy Tappy Type by Missy Meyer. I love her fonts. Um, if you subscribe to Creative Fabrica, you can get um, all the fonts she has listed there for free, which is what I do. I mean, it's included in your membership, but her, and it's all, um, her, her fonts are fabulous. So for this one, I want to do, I think I'm going to do, yeah, a buffalo plaid ribbon. So I'm going to cut mm, about that much ribbon. I put the, the wrong scissors, not good scissors. Let's try that again. And for this one, I'm just going to wrap it around and tie a bow. Okay. If you watch my bow making video, you know I'm a little fussy when it comes to making bows. So I am going to speed this up. But just make sure you get that bow to look how you want it to. For me, I like the loops to be even. I like on this for the tails to be about the length of the loops. For this. Other things I like longer tails, but for this project, that's what I wanted. So just take some time, get your bow to look exactly how you want it, and then you're never going to have to mess with it again as long as no one unties it. The last part is to wrap this one with a ribbon. 
and I've decided to use this. So this is, um, I think this is quarter inch, quarter inch ribbon. I am going to wrap it three times. So I'm going to start by gluing it in, and then I'm just going to wrap it around. Um, and then glue it. I'll show you. And then we're going to add another ribbon on top. If you happen to have thicker um, ribbon, you definitely just wrap it once. But this is what I've got to work with. So instead of buying something new, I'm going to be thrifty. And I'm going to make this work for me the way that I want it to. And I want you to think that about that in your crafting too, right? We don't always have to go buy something new. Sometimes we can just be a little creative and make what we have work and look really good in this at the same time, right? So I can go ahead and cut this one. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back of here. This is a, a low temp glue gun. Okay. So I'm going to speed this up for this last part. I'm just attaching this ribbon to my crate or my faux book stack. And then I'm going to add that second piece of jute down the middle. You don't have to do this. This is just how I decided to finish this one because I wanted to stack these two. I wanted to put the Merry Little Christmas on top of the Farm Fresh Trees in a tiered tray. It had a purpose. So be creative. Do what you want. Do what makes you happy. I want you to run out to Dollar Tree and grab some of these little crates and make some of these book stacks for you. You can make any season that you want. They're easy to make. They look great in a tiered tray. They look great in a mantle. They look great in a shelf. I mean, there's just endless uses for these. And I really love that you can personalize it and make it match the decor that, that works for you. And for a buck and a quarter... And a little bit of paint and a little bit of vinyl. You know, it's, it's such an affordable gift for someone who loves this kind of stuff. So I'm Amy Green with Amy and Art Designs. Drop a Christmas tree if you watch to the end. And um, make sure that you like and subscribe so we can stay in touch. I can't wait to craft with you again soon.